This is Broad Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I want to do a taste test on a mango, a grafted mango tree that I bought from Excalibur uh, about almost six years ago and planted here. And uh, we try to grow it naturally, and or we do grow it naturally. And I had never fruited jackfruit until this year, and we got fruits on two of our grafted jackfruit trees from Excalibur. And this is one of them. It's just a little tiny, like, three point seven pound fruit, probably about three pound fruit. And I got one yesterday and ate it, and it was really good. I'd never had a chunky or a crunchy uh, jackfruit before. And I wasn't sure if I liked it, but at first, and then I, I really liked it. So here it is. It's this little tiny fruit doesn't have a lot of fruit in it, but it's got plenty, and it's very good. It smells very good, and it tastes very good. Hmm, it's extremely sweet. Very low latex. Um, I'm gonna plant all the seeds. I've been looking to get seeds off these trees for a while to see if I like the fruit and to plant the seeds. Seeds are very small and they kind of look like the description of the cochon, so they're like little tiny like roundish seeds rather than great big seeds. I guess what you'd expect for a small jackfruit. Very good. I don't know what type that is, so if you, any of you uh, jackfruit experts know, happen to know from that description please let me know i'm gonna go out to the tree now because it this little tree produced like eight fruits this year and i'm just so happy that i'm finally getting everything just to fruit one by one cross it off my list just to show how easy it is to grow healthy naturally in Florida. Basically, all you need to know is to apply some manure, some earthworm castings, let the orchard floor grow out, plant your tree in it. <clears throat> That's all you need to know. Uh, the tree source kind of does matter. I have found from trees that have been given to me that were started with miracle Grow or... Um, Coco core, I guess, is what it is. Don't survive here. They haven't. Uh, it's not, I can't say that's 100%, but that's just my experience with trees that were started <clears throat> that way. And it's getting kind of overgrown here, but that's how I like it. So all these bugs live here because of the signaling from the system that it's a very healthy place for life. Um, we now know that biogenic VOCs are moving through the air and they're responsible for plant to insect communication. So we don't really have a disease or um, pest issues here. We don't. And um, uh, that's b because of the high amount of biogenic VOCs, phytochemicals, being signaled through the air and through the plant uh, microbiome. The monarchs are starting to show up. And 
they seem like they're starting to come here for the winter in larger numbers. When you're using synthetic, or when you when you're balancing your nutrients in your for your tree for your one tree, you're putting your you're turning your uh, communication system the natural communication system so when like cold weather moves in all of a sudden or it gets super dry all of a sudden or um a, a bug is attacking your tree or disease fungal disease is uh, attacking your tree um by applying nutrient balancing techniques and like fungicides like copper on the on the leaf you're uh, shutting that tree's natural ability to protect itself and it's just gonna suck up npk like it's full summer because there's excess when you apply it in the soil it's, we know this so um i was trying to figure out what was wrong i knew the nutrient balancing scheme was wrong because everyone is is different about it so the the biodynamic people have a set of nitrogen amounts that you you should apply and then the organic uh, people have a set of nitrogen amounts that you can apply and then the University of Florida has a set of nit uh, nitrogen nutrients you should apply and they're all way different. So um, kind of these techniques are debating nature is what they're doing. And nature wants organic fertilizers, you know, manure, small amounts of manure. And with that manure will come the earthworms and all the other life with it. And when you're doing the NPK and the, the, the stuff, that life... might show up but if you apply weed killers and, and fungicides and um, insecticides then herbicides then you're killing all that that's like killing the brains of the biology and that's what's going on in us uh, ammonia has been traced to a uh, brain fog and uh, you in humans so you don't it's obvious that the ammonia they're consuming is from the being created from the foods that they're eating with ammonia fertilizers. This is causing the disease in us, and it's also causing global warming. That's that we know what it's what's causes it. We don't need to look for answers anymore. We need to stop using this stuff. And Floridians, we know we can turn Florida into paradise. I just had to check this. Uh, Quimuck tree that I got from Excalibur, the, the fruit, because fruit's getting pretty big, and I would say it's bigger than a ping pong ball now. I'm gonna eat that fruit. I ate a fruit off our tree, seed grown tree, and the fruit looks nothing like that. The fruit off our seed grown Quimuck was orange. So when you are giving MPK, you're, when it gets cold, your tree can't like s send uh, uh, signals to the biology to uh, heat up the plant. Probably with water would be my guess. All these processes are all connected and the plant phytochemicals, the plant biogenic phytochemicals, you know, the BOCs, yep. are finally being looked at, control all that stuff. You can, you can increase uh, some uh, phytochemicals um, in with uh, synthetic nitrogen, but um, we don't know if that's putting the other ones out of balance or what type of, or if that uh, 
phytochemical is is the same as the exact same as the uh, organic phytochemical. I don't know. It's it's just I would say no. You really need the the uh, we know that uh, nitrogen turns off the that if you're applying readily available plant nitrogen then it turns off that communication <clears throat> and also prevents like uh, plant microorganism uh, symbiosis so no endophytic uh, plant plant microbiology growing inside the plant and on the plant leaf <clears throat> anyway here's that jackfruit tree and I ate this fruit yesterday and I brought the not the seeds but the um the old fruit out here and then I had a fruit that didn't I didn't think was ripening correctly that I threw down there I, I leave the fruit on the ground around the tree I I think that's really important and I can smell the fruit so I know that its fumes are going into the air and probably being captured by the the living roots the tree and the other living roots that are growing in this system so these don't look like they're quite ready yet. The leaf is still just beginning to die attached to the fruit. So these look like they're a little bit bigger than that one. This one is getting close. So we have three left. I'm going to eat all of them now that I know. It's a tiny little tree. I mean, look at it. It is tiny. Grafted Excalibur tree. Um, I haven't watered this tree since May, I believe, was the date. End of May, maybe. I don't think I have to turn the water on here anymore for these grafted trees, these uh, first group of grafted trees that I planted here. I know none of our seed grown uh, jackfruits I water and they do just fine. So um, it, it's totally unnecessary. Unfortunately, nursery grown trees just do not function correctly a lot of times because they're, uh, the seeds weren't started correctly on the gra and then they're grafted. And I'm not sure if grafted trees are the, the answer. I know it's a good way to get all the varieties in a tight space. So and get early production, but I mean, I have a lot of grafted trees. I just, I wanna grow seed, seed grown trees from the fruit, from the nursery grown trees. Checking this freaking ice cream bean for fruit. This is like worse than the, worse than looking for fruit on the achacha. Anyway, that's Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and that's uh, our jackfruit tasting here at Vero Beach, Florida.